You know, the 10 Crack Commandments, mm -hmm. the Biggie, Biggie song. So I used to have a promo on my show and it was the Hot Five at Nine. And Pr DJ Premier did the beat for me. And Big was listening to the radio, heard the beat, wanted it for oh, a song. My God. Premier called me and was like, yo, Big wants your Hot Five at Nine beat for a song. And I, he was like, "It's but it's yours. Is it cool if I give it to him? I was like, yeah, of course. It's Big. Give him the beat. On Hot 97, I remember this. Martinez. Never let him know your next move. Don't you know bad boys move in silence and violence? Big Boys Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, what? ladies and gentlemen. Hey, this hey, is an hey. honor and a pleasure. Oh, stop this, No, for real, though. Angie Martinez Ooh. in the neighborhood. I love you, Big. I love you, too. Welcome back. Thank you, man. Go Thanks for having now. me. Man, it's was, our pleasure. I was only in town for a day. Yeah, man, and you made it happen, too. I appreciate you. How can I not see Big when you I'm here? You know what? I'm going to tell you straight up, man. Like, if I had a turnaround schedule, and it ain't about, like, Angie Martinez or anyone, I don't think I would have showed up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, dude, I'm a better person than you are. You, you know, and you really are. In a lot of things, though. You know, in, in Stop. a lot of things, your Stop. book outsold mine. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a competition. You bring that up every time I see you. I feel like you're, I? Really, you're really harboring you know why? feelings about no, and, it. And it's not about you. It Like, your book came out, and it was my voice, right? Yeah. I, it was a New York Times bestseller. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> I love that. Say it's it. a New York Times bestseller, <laughs> and mine sold. Okay. A couple copies. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, mine was a seller. Right. People just didn't buy it, but it was a seller. And, it's not and it your definitely fault. wasn't a best and it's seller. It's not a reflection of how people feel about you because I know people love you. Right. It is just maybe, the, I don't know, maybe the team, maybe the marketing plan. Mm. Who yeah, knows? I had one of the biggest publishing companies, oh. Simon and Schuster. Did you go out on a full tour? Because I did like, I worked yeah. and did a tour <laughs> and did a book signings. Let me tell you about my tour. Wow. I was in, I think I was in Harlem. Oh, you told me this. <laughs> yeah. It was four people. Yeah. Oh, and and on, one of the people were homeless <laughs> and it was cold outside and they asked me did I want them to take him out because she was asleep and I was like nah you know See, this, just, just let her a, stay that should have been a bad sign that yeah. should have been a, this yeah, man. a warning yeah yeah well, you're, and but you your know book what? was great and you Thank are you. great and so it's, it's not a Thank reflection you. okay okay cool that makes me feel better but, all that therapy money too but go ahead <laughs> I'll tell you when you beat me in one What's you, that? You 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 got a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah, man. Before I got a star yeah, in the Hollywood yeah. Walk of Fame, you beat me. You win that. Well, you know, it's not really a competition, but yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, but but congratulations to Thank you on you. getting your star, your class Thank of twenty twenty four. Yeah, they just yes. we just announced it recently. Yeah, but I have to man. thank you because you're a part of the committee that votes yeah. right now yeah, for man. this thing. So I have to thank you for and that. And when I saw that you got in too, because when I saw that you were nominated. I was like, well, well it, it, it's a lot to it, but it was like, who, who, who? And I was like, man, we got to nominate Angie. We got to nominate That's Angie. Amazing. Thank and you. Then, but, Thank but, you to everyone but it's, for but it's Thank also you, your career and the great things that you've done that got you in. Because when I when I brought your name up to the committee, they had to go back and look and you know see what was going mm -hmm. on. But congratulations to thank, you. That's why it's thank you so much. Yeah, it's man. It's really amazing. I'm coming to your ceremony it's too. It's not even something I thought I. It wasn't even something to think. Oh, I want to get. I didn't even think like that it was, wasn't like a bucket list item. It wasn't or... even a thing I thought was in my world. Like I, I just never even yeah. occurred to me that I could have one. I of remember those. Make, making that call. I was like, dude, do you have a star? You was like, nah. And you could tell you weren't thinking about. I was. It. I, think, <laughs> I didn't even think. She it was like, nah, a thing. I don't have a star. That I could, um, I could aspire to. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that is a testament to that's why it's important who's in the room, right? Like, we have to have representation. We have to have people in the room. Uh, that's yeah. the only way we lift yeah, each man. other up. And you are somebody who gets in the room and then lifts other people up. And it's, yeah. Um, so yeah. Because I had people in the room for and me. And I will do the same when I'm yeah. in the room. Oh, you definitely will. I will do the you same. You definitely will. Have you picked a date yet for your star? I haven't yet because I don't want, I don't even understand all this. Uh, somebody told me Michael B. Jordan uh, got his, he held it until Creed came out right like, right people hold yeah. it till there's like a moment pick your date because i got mine on my birthday that's good yeah i made sure of that but pick that date that probably means something yeah, to you i'm gonna you have know? to do that i'm gonna do it on your birthday really though what <laughs> <is>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then i gotta be out there at the store on my birthday yeah. oh yeah yes and, yes, and, yes, like, and happy birthday no i'm definitely oh, gonna be there you I, be I there. can't you wait man there. class of 2024 angie we've been in radio for for years how many, do, do you keep like how no. many years you've First been of on all, i hate when i have to you know all this hip-hop 50 talk everybody's like do you remember in 1999 i'm like oh Oh God, here we right. go with the dates. <laughs> right. Because dates and times, it's all like a blur to me. Yeah, yeah. I remember moments and I remember interactions Same. with people and feelings. I don't remember what year, who dropped what. Like, I, it's just a blur. To do me. people 
people ask you, Angie, what's your favorite interview? Yeah, I hate that question. Because I don't know it's mine. the stupidest question in the world. Yeah. It's like, what was your favorite breakfast you ever had? I don't, I don't <laughs> right. know. I have breakfast every day. I don't know. It's a great breakfast. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't have one. No. And, and I'm coming up on year 30, but I don't have like an interview where I'm like, man, this was the best. Yeah, but don't you have like these? I have memorable ones. Memorable, not only just memorable ones overall, but little pieces. It's funny because I do it on my podcast. I do a segment called Takeaways. Like, what's the takeaway? What's the thing that stays with you? It could sometimes be the littlest thought that somebody says. Mm -hmm. It could be a big interview, and it'd be the littlest thing that you just remember for years and just stays with you. The takeaway. So I have a lot of those. I got those too. A lot of little moments where people drop the jewel, either for me or for the audience. Or do you forget guests sometimes? Where oh people God. be like, oh, sometimes sometimes I'll be, be like, like Wait, I'm you so are? happy to have you on my show. They'd be like, Angie, I've been here twice yeah. before. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. It must hey, have man. been really meaningful. I remember I hit one person, <laughs> and I was like, man, you still haven't come to the neighborhood. And she sent me a picture. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you actually did. All right, Randy, I'm sorry about that then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, and it's not that, you know, you don't, it's like a blur or, what, or it wasn't important. I just... No, it's, it's just, life. It's because we do a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. But I, it doesn't take. We don't take it for granted. Yeah, but I have those shows, Angie, where it's like, okay, I remember nine eleven. Nine eleven, we came in, and you know, it was f- it was like five o'clock in the morning here on the West Coast. Yeah. And I remember my guy Fuzzy came out, and he was like, "Man, some idiot just crashed into you know the Twin Towers into the World Trade Center," and we were like, "What?" And we go into the office, and we see the second plane come in live. Mm-hmm. Once we saw that, we were like, "Oh." Like, what the hell is going on? We tried to do this regular show that day. Impossible. Impossible. So that show, memorable for me, and that show came back a lot. Mm -hmm. The time when I announced- Imagine me doing my show. I had to walk through debris to get to the station. Like, you know. What was that like that day? The crazy thing is the day of, I couldn't get in because I was in New Jersey. I was with my mom in Jersey. And so when it happened, we couldn't get into the city. So actually on 9-11, I was not on the radio, which was crazy. Wow. And we were feeding a feed, like a news feed through the channel. Yeah, just calling in and doing certain things. And and then we got our feed back. And the next day I was like, yeah, I can't come in. It's all blocked. And, And our program director at the time tracy she was like angie this is a terrible time for our city and it's so weird don't make it weirder by your voice not being on the radio and i was like mm. oh my god i'm on my way i don't yeah, know how man. i'm gonna get in there yeah. but i'm gonna i didn't even pro- i didn't even process that part of it mm. like don't make it weirder for everybody yeah man or diff- more different you have to come and you it have was to figure hard it out. to try to get normal but and we I, were also used hard to, to get to work i literally had to walk through a long time because you know they wouldn't let cars in the area because where the station was in new york it, it's it's walking distance from the buildings yeah. so wow. I was I had to walk uh, I don't know I want to say thirty blocks down and there's still debris in the air smoke in the air the you know, the smell will stay with me forever the scent of what that was like mm-hmm. um, and then getting on the radio and then like what do you do you not yeah. we're, we're not trained from this right what are we for we come from hip hop and we're like yeah. okay what winter you know we we like we have lifestyle conversations but we're not trained for nine eleven attack and mm-hmm. and there's people literally uh, literally walking distance fighting for their lives yeah and, jumping out of windows yeah, and, and i remember we tried to do a regular show and we were like we can't yeah and we are, i remember do you know jennifer norwood yeah jennifer called us she was in new york at the time mm-hmm. and i remember we were like well you know what's going on and she was giving us kind of a play-by-play and then she just started screaming and you know and it's now horrible. we're like wonder what's happening she's she like just, they're jumping out the windows people yeah. are jumping out the windows so that angie is a show that you never forget i remember that. and it comes back to me Mm. Announcing to LA that Tupac died Me too. is another show. Even in New York. That continues to come back. You remember what that show felt like? Oh God, yeah. I was on the air. You know what's so crazy that I tell this story in my book too that the um when Pac passed, you know, it wasn't social media like that. Right, so it didn't right, spread like that. Right. I called the hospital. I, f- I was on the air and called the hospital because I kept calling to check on him. Um just to check. During the days when Pac was still yeah, with was, us, yeah. Yeah. Just checking I, up on him. I called the hospital and um and somebody on the phone just like told me. That Pac passed. Had passed. And, but people didn't really know yet. It hadn't come yeah. out or spread. And she told me on the phone and I was on the air. And um, and so that's how I was found that out. Was that called live? Or it, you had... It a- wasn't live, but then I wound up telling the city and, it, yeah. and I cried and I was... I never cried on the radio. You mm. know, we, we don't cry on the radio. Right. You know, but it was... It was um, 
You know, people to this day will tell me, I remember that day. They remember that day? Because it happened in the moment. And when you said no social media, that's the same. That yeah. It was the same. It was like, I remember we heard something. But that's the things that connect us to our audience, right? Yeah. That's the things that we we remember forever, you and I, because we, we had to do it. But also the people that were listening and were with us. Yeah. That's what really connects us to our Yeah, man. And, 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 and it's grew raw. Up with us. They and grew up with us. It's mm-hmm. raw and it's not rehearsed. And yeah. I remember the same. We came in and they were like, man, we're hearing certain things. I remember we huddled in an office and we were talking in the office and we started making calls. And then we got like a legitimate person on the phone mm-hmm. that was. And when that person was like, yeah, man, you know, we lost them. So on and so forth. Of course, it's not social media. It wasn't this wildfire that spread. And I remember Angie literally walking from that office back to this to the uh, the booth and thinking, I got to tell people that Pac is gone. That's awful. And this is crazy to me. It was like almost like that graduation step where you just take one step, you pause. Next step, you pause. And I remember not fast forward to, you know, the years now and he, and Pac is still held so very high. I knew what it was at that moment. Mm. And it felt crazy. And the phone lines going off and people calling in and people were really, really affected, especially the days of Pac being alive. And then having to announce that he passed because people were thinking like, man, all he took, you know, he got shot before and Pac could get through this and you have the well wishes. But, you know, that that was another show. Yeah, that I remember. Of, well, we were all young, too. None of yeah. us were prepared for that. We, none of us were prepared for that because we hadn't experienced it before. So yeah. we didn't. I don't know. It was like we knew that there was danger all the time and stuff like that. And people had passed. But I don't know. We just I don't I, I for sure was floored. And what was it like in New York around that time? Oh, God. Um. It was horrible. It was like uh, nobody nobody expected that. And, you know, we had all all that stuff going on, but nobody, I don't right. think anybody thought that that would happen. Yeah, that it can get that serious. It, it was. I, it felt like it's like when we brought do – you, do you imagine your audience when you're talking? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, you know, so I, I could feel the tone of what – like if something scandalous is going on, I imagine everybody's like, buy their handful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what did he say? Yeah. What did she say? Oh, he lying. You know, that type – I could kind of feel the energy of the audience – that day, I felt like if the city was just like sad and still, right? And I, you know, I'm not in everybody's living rooms or homes, but it's what it felt like mm-hmm. from my side of and the people, microphone. At that time, people listened and quiet different. and just shocked. Yeah, shocked. Still, you know, yeah. It was and and it was it's wild because people listened different, mm-hmm. and it wasn't like you had streaming services and everything just popped up on you, and you can go to social media. It was like you heard it either in one place or a couple places, and not just Pac, just news, period. News, period, yeah. And No, we were the social, radio was the oh, yeah. social media yeah. Of, of, yeah. of the game. And people then. would say, you know, oh, Big said. Yeah. Angie said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. That's one of the most proudest things I am about my career in my life. It's like, that we had a lot of power at that time. Yeah. And I didn't, I never, um, I just never let that uh, lead me, or I never misused that. Same. I don't think so. I mean, somebody could be like, well, you could have did this better. And maybe there's moments in my career and life I could have did different things and maybe better. But I never really, I don't know. I feel like people could have misused that type of power oh, in yeah. so many ways. Definitely so. And, and you know? also, I think early on, you start to think and you understand your gift. It was, can be your curse. And I was curse. also very grateful. I was always grateful Same. and I was always surprised in a way. Like, <laughs> like, like surprised that people would share these stories with me. And even I think a bit, I was thinking about this the other day, like Big and remember that love triangle between Big and Faith and Kim mm. and they used to come on my show and tell all their stuff and the city was all involved. It was like a novella, like a soap opera. Right. Right. <laughs> but it was, I don't know, it was like love. And they, they I don't know, people just trusted me to tell their stories, yeah, man. whatever their you stories. You were almost was. like Crazy. the couch. I just felt. You know how when people say, man, I, like I have people that are still to this day say, oh, man, he never or she never let that much out. You know, it's comfortable. Even if somebody would say certain things on your show, Angie, you never felt like. Like you were just, you never felt messy. Mm. You never felt like yeah. you were in the middle of it, and like, oh, girl, and he, you know what I'm saying? It was I don't like to hurt nobody. We're not trying to hurt nobody. Yeah, yeah, but but that right there too is not a fine line because it's a line that people just walk. If you got it, you got it, mm-hmm. and you can't teach character. Yeah. You can't teach character, man. And character is what's being said about you when you're not in the room. And when you're not in the room, Angie, people speak beautiful things about you. Thank you and man. that right there is the many deposits that you made into whatever account this is of life. 
you made some great deposits, you Thank know, you, and people love. people trust you. When they say the voice of New York, mm -hmm. that's real. You know what I'm saying? You know, I say all of that right back to you. Oh, every time I take you it. Well, can, can you say it? <laughs> well, it was no, a lot, no. and I'm having a hard time remembering it. But, yeah, but big. Just give me a that. summarized but version of it. <laughs> You, know, you mean so much to the city, and you yeah, have man. been a pillar of just you know what I mean, yeah, good nah. energy and a platform for people, and you've and you've had so much integrity throughout your career. Man, you've you wrapped know, your arms around so many artists. Angie, I wasn't I, I'm I wasn't looking for you to say that, but thank you. Honey. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, your man. Your consistency and, and yeah. your commitment. Yeah, man. What do you think your staying power is? And I know that's a very generic question, but we've seen people in our business, Angie, that's here today and gone tonight. And and, and now these <laughs> years. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. The, but oh this time gosh. goes like this now. Yeah, you does. know, what do you think it is if there is something that you've thought about? Um, I'm, for me, I'm, I'm always just trying to figure out what's next. I mean, radio's been good to me in the sense that I've had this platform. It's like my home base. Mm -hmm. and But it has, and I've also worked with people over the years that have not stopped me from doing other things. Because right. I think that that has always kept me moving forward in my career. My juices, I could do a book, and I could do a guest appearance in this movie, or I could do some music at that time. Or I could always, you know, now I'm playing around with production and writing and things like that. And so I'm able to grow as an individual, while I'm still doing radio, radio is just like my base. It's like yeah. part of. It's almost you, like a, you still a enjoy limb. it. It's almost like a limb. Right, right. At, at this point. You know, Even if like you stop it, if you still have that. Like, oh, it's, it's just my leg. leg. It's all. You know what I mean? Do you still enjoy? I do. Which, yeah. Not every day. Like right. anything. Nobody, <laughs> nobody enjoys everything. Can you keep it real? I think you yeah. have to. Yeah. No, not every day. Um, I think you have to have enough work ethic to get the days that you don't enjoy whatever you're doing. Like if you love being a doctor, but so you don't want to get up today. Right. Right. But somebody right. needs a heart today. So you get up and you do it. Your work ethic and your drive has to get you through the days that maybe you don't love it as much. Right. But like 80 percent, 85 percent of the time. I still love right, it. Right. 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 Can you imagine not having it? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this I'm, is my leg, I told right, you. Right, right, right. No, you said your arm. <laughs> I said leg. You could rewind this. Really, though? You, the one thing about you is you don't you pay attention arm? to say, your guests. It's a problem. What? <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? My bad. I was calling the Jose. <laughs> <laughs> the number one rule of interviewing is you must pay attention to your guests yeah, well, and their answers. Well, let me write that down 30 years later. <laughs> You know what I'm hey, saying? You learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I learned something Maybe your from you. book would have sold more big if you... Oh, oh that was terrible. That was terrible. All right. Um, that was Angie Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Beck. Uh, yeah, and yeah. by the way, you, know, you should. You maybe should know. my book would have sold more, Angie, if copies got off the shelf. You ever yeah, thought about that? You're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I will tell you where there is one in my house on really my know. shelf. Did you buy it? Exactly, it I had it handed to, to you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do have a best handout book. You know what I mean? It's my I best would, seller. I would have bought it. Right, if you would have given me the opportunity to buy it. I would have. If you gave it to me too soon. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Blame it on me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. She has a best seller. I have a best giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> so you saying that you dabbling in other things now too, like production and writing? Yeah, I want to do. You know, I want to do bigger storytelling. I want to do. I'm so interested in like I don't know documentary storytelling. So I've kind of been. Uh, framing out some it's too soon to talk about any of that stuff but th the future of my career right. i think is a little bit more behind than in front right not right. that i won't always be in front but i do have i do have a strong i've been writing a lot i probably have three scripts in my house that i have finished and um and so i don't know where they land or which one goes first or you know i'm still trying to figure out what the next phase but it is definitely in creating stories whether it's you know scripted or documentary non -scripted, okay so you know like that, that. I do know that. I do feel that in my in my bones. Yeah, man. And, and plus now, like even when you were talking about when 9-11 happened, you couldn't get to the studio. You couldn't make yeah. it. You had to walk. Now, even with technology, technology is different where, you know, some people are doing their shows from their homes and some people are doing their shows from the road. And now with everything that you have that's kind of at our fingertips. Yeah, you can I'm still... doing my show from here today, from your office. Oh, really, though? Yeah. <laughs> See, there it is. I am. Yeah, man. Today, I got we, to do we, it from We've here. seen a lot. I remember when I, and you and you as well, I'm sure, Angie, when I first got into the game, it was like carts. I you know. know what I'm saying? And oh, my God. You remember we used to have these, so you know how you edit in that little machine and it takes you two seconds? So oh, we yeah. had the reel to reels. Yeah, man. So I when I first, some of my earlier interviews, all Big Pac, all those J, early J interviews, is all on reel to reels. Yeah. So it'd be a reel, and then the, the way you would edit it is you would take a knife, a, I mean, not, not a knife, a razor blade, yep. 
you cut this piece, and that's part of him talking about this. And you cut this piece, and then you tape it together. Yeah, man. You remember this? Oh, yeah. So I would go home with a oh, razor yeah. blade cuts all over oh, my finger from editing okay. interviews. And that's, if you cut the wrong piece. Does that make piece? me sound like 150 years old? No, it just no. must. <laughs> it just seems like re- so much effort. Like, not in a bad way. Like, it just seems like there was so much work and passion really put into it. Oh, yeah, Because yeah. you had to do it like you had that. had to do it the yeah. hard yeah. way. And if you yeah. cut the piece out. And I out, was nice with the razor blade. Oh, yeah. I'd be like. Psh, 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 psh. Hey, dude, once I learned that, that's when they started going digital. Yeah. Soon as I, <laughs> I was like, you motherfucker. I was like, are y'all serious? <laughs> yeah, because th- that that's true. Yeah. I remember cutting and splicing. And, and if you cut something out, it was gone. Wow. Yeah, so going were you good at it? Because I was really good at I it. Got, I got good. And as soon as I got good. So here's what, how it goes, people. So it go be like, somebody if somebody's telling a story and they go, yeah, so I woke up and um, 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 I was hungry. You're like, good Lord, my listeners are going to fall asleep. Yeah, man. So then you change it to, I woke up and I was hungry. Yeah. So that's all the listener hears. The listener doesn't hear the 10 ums in between. You know and why? Because I got razor blades on right. my hand to help <laughs> them put that together. And I would be sitting there like, you motherfucker. <laughs> do you know what I got to do when you leave from here? <laughs> <laughs> all those damn ums. Yeah, man. Like, oh my gosh, man. <laughs> or curses. You have to oh. cut the curses out. Or oh, yeah. And you're editing all by sound because you can't, like, you know, now we see a wave file, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. No yeah. wave file. It's a piece of, yeah. it's a piece of plastic. Oh, it's like my a little God. piece of thing. Yeah, you're doing it by sound. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, man. You kids nowadays got it easy. <laughs> no, we sound 100 years old, baby. Yeah, so man. Clear. Oh, it's yeah. interesting. Well, I'm okay with it. How are you with that? I'm very very good with okay, it. Okay, good. I'm very good. I love my uh, like. I'm okay with age. Yeah. People, people weird get weirded out by it, but I'm yeah, like, I'm here. Why? I learned. I'm some here, stuff. man. I got more to learn. I'm here. I embrace it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? God willing, I got more ahead of me. But nah, and yeah. and, and it's been and it's been wonderful. I've I've have, I've been having. I mean, hip hop is time. fifty. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. You know what's what's crazy about hip hop being fifty, Angie, is that we've been there professionally as well, not just as children of hip hop, mm-hmm. professionally. For more than half. You know what I'm saying? Nuts. Like, that's crazy, the contributions also to hip-hop that we have given and the hip-hop that we have received. And we've been through, you know, we've been through, you know, Bad Boy, Cash Money, Rockefeller. Like, just seeing those for the first time Mm -hmm. and and introducing. I remember my first sit-down with Destiny's Child. I remember my first sit down with DMX, my first sit down with Ice Cube, with Snoop Dogg. You know, like I remember all those first. Do you remember like a young Method Man or a young who? Did you have everybody the same way I did? Yeah, all of them. Nas, Nas, Wu Tang, all of the, uh, yeah, all of them. Mob Deep. And then so many people that are not here anymore, which always makes me so sad. Um, But yeah, DMX and. You know, I was in New York. So yeah. in New York in the 90s, this was like, you know, it was like the golden era of that. And that's when I was starting my career. So it was, you know, Mary was running, young me and me yeah. and young Mary was in the streets. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I probably played Jay's record probably first. A Jay-Z record. People didn't were like, well, who's that? Jazzy? No, right, it's right. Jay-Z. His name is Jay-Z. I put him in the Battle of Beats. He was a new wow. he was a new artist. I put him, I put his song in the battle and everybody, and he won like five nights in a row. I didn't know who he was. I just, I just, you know, I played the song and he showed up. <laughs> he showed up with Dame Dash after to thank me for putting him in the battle. And they brought me a bottle of uh, Cristal at the yeah. time. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So the, all those artists were like babies. And so was I. So we yeah. kind of all grew up together. But I happened to be on the radio at the same time. My little radio was my high school and college. I started at 18. So I was I grew up on the oh, radio. This literally. Is life life. No, literally on the radio. I grew up there. How mm-hmm. do you keep your per- and, and I don't know if you live on the air a lot but if you have a bad day did you talk about a certain bad day or did your listeners live with you as well like I, I know with my listeners I let them in on something something some things you don't yeah no some things I don't and also I don't know I, I always I, I never wanted it to be me 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 my right. mother my mother was on radio right and she used to talk about how the jocks her, her, how jocks used to be like, it's me, my voice. I love the sound of my voice. I'm the me, 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 me. So I was always mindful of that. Like I did never made the conversation. I wanted the conversations to be about the guests. Right, And gotcha. the artists. And I tried to think of my audience and what they care about. And so I never really internalized like, man, I'm having a day. This is why. This is what I'm going through. Sometimes I did. Right. Like they knew when I was pregnant. They knew when I was sick. Yeah, they those knew when things. I had the baby. They knew when I was, you know, all those things. But um, so this is why I kind of now, so now I have the podcast also, right? right? Because I went through so much in my life 
where I felt like there's so many people that connect to me. I want to be able to share in a in a in a way where I could tell them what I've learned and what I've been through and yeah. how I got to the other side of it because I always I do believe our stories inform other people when they're in those same type of crises right we're supposed to mm -hmm. share those moments that's yeah, that's why God so. does that so we have so we get on the other side and then we share and hopefully people experience that so I started the podcast in real life so that yes, I could have a platform where I could say man I went through this and this was hard but this is how I did it and asking other people and so so on the radio, I tend to like I lean into my guests and I lean into the audience. And then on my podcast, I, I lean into myself and mm. my experiences a little bit more. So that's the difference. I know with, with radio for me, it was always a place that I can go to that was a safe zone too. Like when my mom passed, oh. my mom passed on a Wednesday, Angie, and I was back at work on Friday. And it wasn't because it, did, it, 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 oh, it didn't hurt or I just needed to come back here. I needed that, and I felt a certain way because there's seven of us. Did you talk about it on the air? I talked about it on the air, and it's seven of us. Did you and cry I felt, about it on yeah, the air? Mm -hmm. and I felt a certain way because my brothers and sisters didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Like I walked back in, and I was able to talk about my mom, and you know, people were able to call, and it wasn't like, oh, your mom, your mom. It was just I needed that because you, you know, not that oh, we're we're That's lots so of other people, mm -hmm. but I needed them. At they, that they moment. wrapped your, their arms around they, you. They in in a major, major, major way. That's beautiful. You know, I think I I think people got to know me just because I'm being myself every day. But I think the deeper parts of me sometimes I didn't share as much. So, but then when I made that transition in my career, I, I had been on the same radio station for over 20 years, mm -hmm. and then I left. Yeah. And when I left, it was like all that energy came back to me. Like, I could not walk the streets without somebody going, oh, my God, the time you said this, and then this right. is it. All of a sudden, the energy went so, and I realized, oh, man, it's, it's not a one-sided relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, we've had a two-sided relationship this whole time. I just felt it so strongly when I got off the air. I mean, I always kind of knew, but I felt it so strongly. Like, I felt like my city kind of just Were you off the air arm. for a little bit before you, you go to, to the next spot? Yeah. Went to power? Um, not enough. It was only like maybe a month. Right, right. Yeah, I wish because I my whole life I've worked. I've right, never right. Been, I've never not worked for for a long. I wish I would have taken a few months to maybe travel, maybe do some cool, you know, whatever. And no, I didn't. I went right back to work. Yeah, uh, and, and with <laughs> me when when I left, and it's crazy because our our careers are damn near the same. You yeah. you left the station that you were at for except twenty for the years. Book thing. But yeah, except for the book <laughs> thing. Except, but you know what? I'm writing a new book, and watch how Ooh, this one says. You're gonna kill it. This new one. Yo. Yeah. Can I and help, now that I have can social I help you media, with your marketing plan. And for you know, your book? you know, when I had it, we didn't have all the social media that we had. Oh, you about now. to kill it? Yeah. Ooh. So now, what's man, the book about? It's about me. It's about life. It's about transfer. Not just 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 with with. Taking care of who you are. Grown up, big boy. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's not like, oh, I was born in, you know, Peoria, Illinois, and I moved to California when I was one years old. You no. know, this is just more a book where you can say, like, damn, same here. Me too. Yeah, I feel that way. So yeah. it's not my story. It's it's like our story collectively, mm -hmm. you know, with some gems in there as well, you know. Let's and watch this one. Let's make sure this marketing plan is together. Mm -hmm. okay. And I got social media this time. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have like Instagram and all that. I think I wrote my book too early. Okay, but it can't just be social media. We need a book tour. We yeah. need we need yeah. a Well, themes. you know what? I we did go I, I we did go on, I did go on that tour. And yeah. <laughs> I know but we, Yeah, you know what I'm saying like <laughs> Yeah, it was. Did some television too. Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> uh, did I'll do television? some television this time too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All yeah. Right. Come do. I'll. I will interview. You, we. You, we could do my show and my podcast. You yeah, I, I'm we'll gonna have to podcast. do. I'm gonna have to do everything because if this right? happens yeah. again, it's It'd gonna be, be bad for me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, we're as your people, we are not gonna allow that. We're okay. gonna do everything right. that we can to support okay. you in this book drop. Because I had right. people on the last one too, Andy. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but these uh, are different people. Where were you guys? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> what what I really you? Know? Man, they were praying for my downfall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's where everybody was at. But what I was getting to was you you was at a station for over twenty years. Yeah. I was at a station for over twenty years. What did New York feel like when you made the announcement or they knew that you were leaving? Yeah, so when they know I was leaving, they didn't know I was going somewhere else. They just thought I was leaving. Right. Damn. And it was so that's why it was so emotional. Everybody was like, Oh my God, it's oh. the end of an era. It's the end. And then and, and this happened. This happened. so I got this big like hug from my city. It was so amazing. Um but yeah, people were so supportive. I was I was so inspired by it. Like I literally I was like, Oh, 
They lifted me up so much, I felt like I have to do something for you. Right, I got to right, do right. something. What, what can I give this to you? Be what can I do? And so I was like, I need to do something else. And then I wound up the next, I signed up for the New York City Marathon. And I ran the wow. marathon that year because I wanted, I don't know. I just was, I wanted to do something with all that energy I got. I felt I needed to do something maybe inspiring, even if it was just to myself. And so, uh, and that was really inspired by the love that I got from my yeah, city. Man. So I was like, I'm going to run the marathon. It was a stupid idea, but I did it. Right. <laughs> And you did the entire twenty six. I I I was I limped the last few miles. But you made and it. Skip, but I finished. Yeah, there finished. it is, right and there. I was been paying for about a year after, but I yeah, finished it. But that's in the mm-hmm. that's in the rearview mirror now, though, ain't it? I did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll never do that again. Right. But, um, but yeah, I felt super inspired, and I felt I don't know, I just felt appreciated, which yeah. is nice. When know? I made the move, it was scary for me because it's always scary. Any pivot or change is scary. Yeah, and 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 I was change resistant anyway. I always thought like, man. I'm, I'm if I'll never leave, you know, Power 106. I'm, I'm going to hang my jersey in the rafters, the rafters, and I was like, oh, I'm here. Mm. And then when you make a life decision, and plus other people had things to say when I left. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't all love because the way that they revealed how I was leaving, they tried to burn me, and and I, I really just, man, I could have did the other station so bad because I had the playbook. I was in the meetings. I know how they felt. But God told me, don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. Yeah. Just go ahead and, you yeah. know, take yeah. care of you. Mm-hmm. Take care of your family. And and that's what I've been doing. Yeah. That's what I've been doing, man. You know, I stepped out on faith even if you can't see the whole staircase. And here we are. We Good are we, we are still here. Where you're I celebrated. So- so when I'm celebrated. You sent me something. You said where you go somewhere where you're celebrated and not tolerated. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's so, kind of yeah. what it There it like. is. Not my words, but those are good memes that you yeah. can send around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Quality <laughs> meme. Yeah. Quality yeah. meme. Every Quality so often meme. you'll catch something like, oh, this sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this I like that. Good. I'll use that. Yeah, man. So just getting back into, you know, the the the, the guests that would come in, the 50 years of hip hop, the mm-hmm. things that we've had had a chance to see through throughout our career. Is there anything that you just can't believe like damn either i was a part of that or i had a chance to bear witness to that yeah man all of it like yeah. all of it because like i said i i feel like i was coming of age at the same time the culture was coming of age right. so like, i got to run the streets with some of the biggest artists in the world but they weren't then they were just aspiring yeah. artists and so i got to see that and so that my my relationships are strong because of that and um and just to witness it to witness you know some of the and it's and it's I don't know. It's weird. Sometimes I, this is one of the reasons probably I want to do documentaries and things like that because I feel like a lot of stories get lost, Mm -hmm. especially of radio. Because radio back then, now when you do an interview, it's on video. We see it on YouTube after. It lives forever. You see clips on social media. So people will remember these recent interviews of the recent years. But in the early 90s, when I was interviewing Jay Z and Big and Mob Deep and, and Nas and all these artists, it was audio. It was just live. Right. So would, we weren't even half the times recording it. Uh, same. So we would ha- and ma- imagine I'm on the air five nights a week. I have a guest, sometimes two guests. So we're talking about 10 interviews a week, just spitting through all the time. And this is golden era prime time. So Mace is coming, then DMX stops in and he leaves. And then this one comes and Jay Z's on Thursday and Mary's coming on Friday. I mean, it was like. And they, would they pop every in on YouTube? Day. Of course. People would pop yeah. in all the time and they'd be in the lobby and I'd be like, oh my God, such and such is here, but they got to wait because I'm finishing with this one. It was all day. And it wasn't prepared interviews where you have now. It's like. I got these questions and this is what right, the streets want right. to know. Sometimes, I mean, I have memories of Big coming in and eating, sitting in the studio, eating ch- Chinese food. And we'd be on the radio just like, so what's up? What'd you do today? Like some regular, it <laughs> yeah, wasn't like And it's a, like we're eavesdropping. Yeah. It wasn't an interview. It was just like, it was a, it was just a culture and an environment, a place where people, where artists felt comfortable coming and chatting. And yeah, there's some of the interviews were a little heavier when there was things to, but some of them we were just like hanging out in the room. But in the middle of that, all these amazing moments happened that I don't feel are well documented. Right. Even some of the bigger moments. Did you record any of those? Oh other yeah, I have some. Have and some? over the time, people have taped and sent me some. So yeah. I have a lot. Like there was a, you know, when Jay Z and R. Kelly went on that tour, and, uh-huh. they, and then they had the fight, and oh, Tata yeah. sprayed R. Kelly in the middle of the night. So when they got off the when they got when they got off the stage, um, Kaiser from Def Jam called me and was like, Jay wants to get on the radio. I was like, Okay, cool. He was like, No, no, he wants to talk to you on the radio. I was like, It's late at night. I'm not on this. Not my shift. He was like, Whoa. He wants you to go to the radio. I said, so I called. I think it was Big Dennis was on. I called. I was like, hi, Dennis. I need you to, um, I know you're working, but I'm, I'm going to come and take over the show. Because wow. And what Jay time is this? This is out in the middle of the night. 
midnight, midnight. I don't right. know, midnight. Oh yeah. So uh, so Big Dennis is like, no problem, man. Just come on in. So I get in. I put the mic on. Jay shows up while Jay's on the radio and he's telling me what happened. And this guy, he's been such a problematic. R. Kelly and this, this, in the middle. So the whole city's listening because everybody was at the concert when the, when it went crazy and right. R. Kelly left. So the whole city's listening in the middle of the night. Then after um, Jay's almost done with the interview, he, uh, I get a call and says, oh, yeah. R. Kelly's listening, and he wants to come tell his side of the story. <laughs> I say, okay, uh, come on down. So it's 1 a.m. or what? I might be, I, it could have been 2 a.m. I don't know. It could be 1 that Don't quote me on the exact time. It was late. Right. So Jay-Z leaves. R. Kelly comes in. Now R. Kelly's on. Mind you, mind you his eyes are still puffy and red. Yeah, because Tata, didn't he, he, did he mace him or you something? You can't deny that somebody pepper sprayed okay, him because I'm seeing did. him. His somebody eyes are like did. this. He's got his glasses, but you could see it. And he's trying to tell his side of the story. He thought somebody was in the crowd with a gun. And so all of this is happening live on the radio. And we weren't videotaping. Mm. We weren't really taping. Thank God over the years, other people who were listening were taping. So I do have it. But it's not clear. It's not, you know, so that's just one moment. Yeah. And when I tell oh, you, yeah. when I tell you, I could spit out 30 of those moments that were not highly documented. And so I feel like there's a big piece of the culture of the history that it's like, it's, yeah. it's missing a little bit. So I'm so super grateful to have been part of that. So but when I think about the history, I think about those moments and I'm like, I hope those I hope they don't go away. You know what I mean? Or or just even clubs like the Tunnel Club in New York, which is so legendary. Mm -hmm. This generation doesn't even, in New York, I don't know what in L.A. L.A. has a little bit more of a nightlife. In New York, there's like not really, there's hookah bars and stuff. Right. There's not, <laughs> the Palladium ain't there. Right. The Tunnel ain't there. Let me These tell you, big clubs that we used to have are not there. Being from L.A., mm -hmm. going to the Tunnel. Being from L.A., you know, going to the Palladium. Like, those those clubs came back to us that we had to be there. Yeah. So anytime. No, it was. The, could you imagine that I experienced? My 25th birthday party was at the Palladium nightclub. Wu Tang was there. Jay Z was there. Faith Evans sang me happy birthday. Biggie was there drinking champagne on the top level. You know, it was this. I'm telling you, this was yeah. the Fat Joe's there. My, the whole of hip hop culture is there yeah. having a party at this big club with 2,000 New York regular New Yorkers. You know, yeah, just people man. partying with their favorite artists in one building. That was nightlife. I always wish that I documented the years better. Yeah, me too. And, that is what my, my one regret is that. Yeah, man. No photos. I never took photos with people. And I, I was, know. I remember mm -hmm. my last time seeing Big, right? I remember he was on crutches and we oh, were the at the, accident. yeah, mm -hmm. and we were at the palace out here. And I remember when I was about to leave, big, someone told big me. Big like to go to a club, too, yeah, by the way. Go ahead. <laughs> somebody was like, Big, they said, man, do you want to take a picture with, with Big before, Biggie before we, we bounce? I said, man, I said, no, nah, I'm good because he's coming to the station uh, next week or the week after or whatever. Uh, and never, never got came. that. You know, we got pictures, but never got that last one. You never know when you're going to see someone for the last time or just those moments. Like, I'll listen to Howard Stern and Howard Stern to say, oh, well, I remember the first time with such and such. And they have everything recorded. I know. And I wish I had Damn some them. of that. Even my Tupac drops. Oh, I remember. You have Tupac drops? No. I erased my Tupac oh, drops no. out of respect, thinking I'm erasing them out of respect. Like, man, Pac is gone. I'm not going to play these again. It'll be crazy and weird and goofy, whatever the words were back then. If I played it, erased them. Mm. And now. That's, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, that's man. Terrible. So I wish I would. Me too. I wish I would have documented it better. And also sometimes now, you know how we are. Like, we're interviewing people all the time. So sometimes our schedule or our life, we can't get to everything. But now, sometimes I always second guess saying no to something because you never know. So we, I remember being at the station one time and somebody called and was like, I was getting ready to leave. I had a, something I had to do. I was packing up. And they were like, hi, um, so Amy Winehouse is in the area. She oh, wants to wow. know if she could come by. She's shopping in Soho. And she wanted to come by the show. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, she she wasn't like Amy Winehouse yet. She was like a new artist at the time. And I was like, I uh, I gotta go. Can we can we just figure out another day? Because I was getting ready to leave, and I just resetting up, trying to find somebody to do. You know, I just it, I was just like, uh, I. But when I think about it now, I could have made it happen. But I just was like, eh, we'll do it another day. Right. We didn't plan it. They should have called me. They should have planned it better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then obviously. So then she blew up, and I, then I wound up becoming the biggest Amy Winehouse yeah. fan. I was like a yeah. fan, and I was like, oh, I can't wait till I get to interview her. Damn, I wish I would have did it that day. And then she died, right. and I don't have not one time do I have Did a, you ever meet her? Never met her, wow. never interviewed her. And I, am, I So whenever somebody, whenever I'm too busy or my schedule's too tight and somebody's like, such and such is in town, I'm like, 
Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll be there at three o'clock. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Not always, because you physically got to take care of yourself. You can't do every yeah. single thing. Right. But I do think about it all yeah. the time. I think about the notion that maybe this opportunity might not come again. And you know what I do also, and not just with, with guests, if somebody passed on, I just say, man, you know what? I made that decision in life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I made that decision in life, not knowing that this person was going to pass. Like yeah. if there's somebody that I didn't get in touch with, I'm like, ah, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. but I, I catch made, him on the other side. Yeah, oh, God willing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If they're going to be at the right place, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but yeah. And, and there's been times in, in my career where I'm just like, man, I wish I would have had one more moment mm. or, or, when the microphone was off. Like, I wish that they had something like, Ani is strictly into AI and everything that's yeah. coming. I wish that you could take your memories and just download them. Maybe you can oh. still. Yeah. Is that available anytime soon? Right. Still, no? well, they have it on the show. What is right. it? Black Mark or oh, something. Black Mirror? Yeah. Black Mirror, but, there you but go. But yeah, those, those are times where I'm just like, man, I wish I would have documented my career and just some of the great sit downs, but I have great mem memories and moments. Not only that do I you have. have great memories, but your city has great memories yeah. of the work that you've done too. Which, yeah, man. You, know, you can't put a price and on I, that. And I mm -hmm. love it. Yeah. I love it, man. And people, I, I've never said no to a picture. You know, uh, I love the love. I don't run from the love. Yeah. And I know what the problem is and standing and taking a picture, that's not a problem. You know what I'm saying? And I always say, man, I You're would rather guy. you ask. Yeah, me too. no, can, I'm the same way. Can you imagine yeah, if, same, if my yeah, ears like, are hurting me? Right, right. Well, what's them big ass earrings you probably no, got? No, here's what happened. Let okay. me tell ladies. You know what I just did? What I did, I I had to sew my earlobe. <gasps> oh really? Oh, because from earrings wearing are earrings, earrings have been from too wearing heavy. door knockers my whole life, my, they got too heavy. So oh. then they damn they, hip hop. Right. You had to give we your talk about ear. the greatness of hip hop, but yeah. we don't talk oh. about how it has ruined our bodies. <laughs> yeah, man. We don't talk about what it is. I'm done sitting over to here with two re totally replaced kneecaps because <laughs> I was over five in the 80s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that break Messing around dancing. doing all that scoop and scrap lover and flipping <laughs> off of Big Daddy's cane hands and doing backflips. Like. I had to wear these door knockers for so long, and so now yeah, I just man. fixed my earlobes. So now I have to wear these clip ons for a couple weeks. Do you ever look back at some of the me. old pictures anyway. too, Angie? What do you mean? Yes, yeah. I look crazy. Really? <laughs> well, a lot of them, yes. You don't think so? You don't think you look crazy somewhere? The only thing that, but you know what? At the time, I didn't look and be like, oh, take a picture and be like, oh, man, I look crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, my thing is, I look at how big I was. Yeah. That's what looked Aww. crazy to me. Yeah. It's how big I was. But you would probably look at something and you would be like, man, I those have are some big I have moments where I look ears. at how big I was. Too. Right, right. Different <laughs> more, I, my, my weight always went up and down. And so I'm like, oh, I, that's where I was at that time. Or this time, I'm, I don't know. Angie, um, iconic ladies' nights. Oh so gosh, many man. wonderful women of hip hop. Yeah. You were part of that. What memories do you have from there? Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, my gosh. Did you ever see the girl who imitates the Kardashians? Yeah, I, I've seen many that have imitated them. Does no, she, the one that she the does. Video. She does all of them. The one girl, she does all yes, of them. Yes, yes. On, on, so on social media. And every time she talks about Chloe, she goes, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can't Cam. stop doing it. So anyway, sorry. Oh my gosh, when you said that. Uh, Ladies Night was, I mean, it's a memory that I have forever. I'm mm -hmm. so grateful to have been part of that. And it's funny because I've always been like shy about that era of my life where I was oh, making wow. music. Mm -hmm. When people bring up the music, I'm always like, oh, if I'm at a party and they play it, I'm like, stop, because oh. I get embarrassed. <laughs> no. But as of the past year or two, I don't know, I, I embrace it more because mm -hmm. I feel so grateful have, to have had those experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I think about Ladies Night, it's so iconic and how it mm -hmm. meant so much to so many people um, that I was just grateful. And I was, you know, I was the baby. I had never experienced yeah. that. So imagine like today, Hey, somebody plucks you off the radio and yeah. puts you on this song and the next thing you know you're on a video shoot and you're at the MTV Awards and you're at the you're shooting like all types of and stuff was happening my I, whole life I'm you the know, rookie on this all-star all team I really was the rookie yeah. was, I never I had maybe rapped on a song one time before that uh, and it was eight bars I did for a song for KRS One, and oh, so wow. and yeah, that was the, literally the mm. only song I'd ever been on You started and then, at the top I You know, know what I'm saying? Was, by the way, it was KRS One and Red Man Oh yeah <laughs> And that was my first song. And then Ladies Night came from from that. Um, so I was, it the whole experience, it was like a, it, it, it was so like, fun. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's like a kid who plays Little League and then, you know, um, Derek Jeter comes and says, come on, kid, let's go 
let's go play a game of baseball. Yeah. Right. Like with you guys, with the Yankees. Oh, sorry, my reference is no, the yeah, Yankees. Please, I you understand. probably have okay. Los Angeles references. Well, they you didn't, you know, you know. You saw what happened. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway. You saw what happened with that. Hush. But, yeah. So uh <laughs> so so yeah, it's th- it was that type of feeling. I just felt so honest. Missy, left eye, yeah, Ken, man. the right. brat. Yeah. I mean, just the group was insane. And then like also I, I imagine the ladies of hip hop right now, like yeah. Megan and you know, I Spice and Cardi, seeing that when they were younger, yeah. and now they're running the game. Yeah, yeah, it's for sure. I like, love to see how many women, because you know there was such a big long time that we didn't have a lot of women. Mm-hmm. It was like a handful at one time. Now yeah. there's so many. Yeah, it's so dope to see. I would love to see more. I don't know, just a moment like that. Yeah, of all of them kind of mm-hmm. coming yeah, together. Yeah. I loved seeing. Be- I mean, this is not related, but I loved seeing Beyonce show up at Taylor Swift's How the sweet movie was that? premiere. The movie premiere. Yeah, man. Because yeah. you know, it's like sometimes just showing up for people that it's very easy to pit people against each other, mm-hmm. especially when people wear crowns. So anybody who has a crown on, you want to pit them against somebody else who has a crown, and it's like, why can't? We all two two women with crowns in the same place is like so so much more powerful, and mm-hmm. I think if we would really embrace that and really yeah. be a, aware of that, it's like well, big as big the love that big always has shown me. Like he, he could be like, uh, L.A. The voice of L.A. is better than the voice of New York. We've right. never had that. Never We've always all. been inspired by each other and supported each other. And there's just so much. It's just it's just a better. It's yeah. a better world. It's a better experience. It's it's more inspiring to other people um, when people stand with each other. So the ladies' night was that experience for so. me in, in a big way. And so yeah, super grateful for that. I moment. can't imagine what those memories. I still feel have. Like. I still have the outfit in my my closet. The jet ski outfit. That one. No, that was a gray t shirt that, <laughs> that I that I that was a gray t shirt <laughs> that I put inside out because I vomited on the boat because ah, I got both motion sick. sickness. I got oh. motion. She gets motion sickness all the too. time. And I, can't. I so I all you need now is to write a verse. <laughs> I know, right? So yeah, when no. you watch the ladies night video and you see me in the chair, I had just the, my t-shirt oh. is inside out because I threw up on the side of the boat. Uh, and the brat was like, well, just put your t-shirt in inside out. We got shoe. You got a stain on the shirt. I was like, hey, okay. man, can you imagine how many hip hop memories? you must have that you probably don't even think about or, mm, or that throwaways sure. that'd be like gems and jewels and you don't or even great storytelling yeah. to someone else, you know, or the things that you've seen that no one else was privy to. Or sometimes people will tell you something that you did that you forgot about. Oh, and, yeah. I'm, and it's like, it's always so exciting. It's like opening an unexpected box yeah. of like, oh my God, that did happen. That's right. <laughs> that was me. It was like uh, DJ Premier told me that. So, you know, the 10 Crack Amendments, the, fa- the, mm-hmm. the Biggie, Biggie song. So I used to have a promo on my show and it was the Hot Five at Nine. And pr- DJ Premier did the beat for me because it was um, J. Wu the Damage. It was his artist. So I had a, pro- a, pro- a beat from my promo for my show and it was the Hot Five at Nine. Uh, and Big was listening to the radio, heard the beat, wanted it for oh a song. Premier called me and was like, yo, Big wants your high five at nine beat for a song. And I, he was like, "It's but it's yours. Is it cool if I give it to him? I was like, yeah, of course. It's Big. Give him the beat. And he made 10 Crack Commandments Ooh, with that beat. Damn. But it was really my promo first. Yeah. You so could've. when I but wow. I for, but I completely forgot about that and then Premier told me that a few years ago and I was like oh my god that is right so okay. now every time I hear Ten Crack Commandments I yeah, feel yeah. like yeah Damn. that was you know what I mean like, that was my joint it was an intro I mean? for me a hit for him you know <laughs> that's how we get down that's how we get down but completely forgot about that yeah man so every now and then somebody will unlock a thing like a, a memory that I'm like wow that's dope life is crazy yeah it, it goes is, so fast man. yeah yeah mm-hmm. and and I'm so glad. That we've had a chance to sit down because I, I just wanted to build with you because you do your thing and I've been a fan for years. Me too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we're like and the bookends. We're yeah. like two bookends. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> the so voice true. of LA, the oh, voice of New yeah. York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And but but you carry it so well. So do you, and you always lead with so much love, and you always make me feel even when I didn't know you as well earlier. Like I knew of you, right? And we knew for I think for as many years we knew of each other, but hadn't oh, really yeah. formed a relationship yet. But when we started to, I always felt so immediately loved. Like I just felt oh, like you always your arms were always open. You always you always felt like a resource for me. And I don't know that I've really ever used it, but you always made me feel like if I needed to call yeah. you for something, one billion percent, you would absolutely be there. Remember when we went to the White House? Yeah, yeah, man. You Have guys you- went together. 
we, we did. We ended up being there together, oh. and we just kicked it, man. We were no. There's a picture of us we, in our socks in, yeah. one of the, <laughs> in the theater. We took our or feet off in the theater. We had yeah. our feet up. I don't think we were supposed to be in there, but no, <laughs> we weren't. Yeah, they they out of there now. I was like, dude, what is this rope in front of this place for? Literally, literally it was like Obama's first first time in office. It was like his first year, I think, yeah, in man. office. It was like early Obama administration. So, and so, you know, later it became normal that hip hop artists and people would be in the White House. But this was the like the first event that they had done and it was like a spoken word and poetry event yeah. so we weren't accustomed to being invited to the white house this never was have like, we didn't even see it from other people we just so when, when i got that that um invite i was like this has got to be like a joke yeah there's no way i'm going to the white house this is crazy when i and then when i went there was big boy hey man and let me the tell two you two bookends i did were the, like i did the same we thing we ran down the hall to each other in slow motion, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I remember the same, Angie. When I got the invitation, I was like, they was like, yeah, you know, they want you to come to the White House. And I was like, <laughs> and I'm looking at it, and like, you, yeah, you've never been invited. No. So now that I get that, then they say, oh, yeah, and they're going to do this, they're going to do this, they're going to do a background check. I was like, I'll never be in that mode. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, if they're doing a background check, but yeah, my background check cleared. Cleared, and and I made it in. Yeah. And, 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 and not knowing... Just, I mean, that's history in there. Then once, once and then Barack we acted up. We was taking pictures, like I said, oh, yeah. in our socks. We, <laughs> yeah. we were in the library with photos. like. Oh, yeah, the, dude. You know, we were just acting crazy. Sitting down at tables we probably weren't supposed to be at. <laughs> yeah. we were point, pointing up at artwork. Yeah, we didn't yeah. know what it was. We were really running around. Yeah, there, it was like bad. Crazy. It was bad. That's, we probably, that's probably why I never went back. Don't want to go back at certain the last. You, you never know. went back? I never went back. Damn. Have you been to the Rock Nation brunch? About six times. Yeah, <gasps> I've never been to the brunch. Why? I don't know. Have you never been invited? That's not. Possible. I think that's it. I've. Uh, do you want to go? Oh man, Angie, I remember one year. Wait, Doc do you want to go? Yes. So why haven't you gone? You just have to call somebody. Oh yeah, yeah. Doc called somebody and it was like, "Oh, the list is closed." Okay, <gasps> can me and you go together like next year? I'm glad, go. I'm glad to get in with somebody. Let's go together. <laughs> yeah. Let's go together. <laughs> because it's obvious. Because that is an oversight. Th There's no th reason they should dude, have that brunch and you're not. I invited. asked because you know now I ask, has, have you been to the brunch? Mm -hmm. I remember I asked Ella May. I said, have you been to the brunch? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, man. I said, I and I told her, I've never been to this. You know, that's tacky. <laughs> yeah. That was like low key tacky. Sorry. <laughs> no, but no, it was real. It wasn't like you really said it out of spite. That's just the way I took it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. No, 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 no worries. I was just confirming her story that yeah. she was in fact well, at the I, 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 I kind of figure too but if you want to say yeah I saw her there that's big it. you have to stop because yeah. there's no way that you can't go to the brunch I don't believe you okay never been <laughs> yeah I've never been but are you asking like day of at noon you know no, I, I asked like about day of like 10 30 yeah. <laughs> Okay. I knew there had to be more to nah, the story. No, 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 no. I don't. You can't do I that. I don't ask. I've never been there. I've never been invited. And I remember one time you days and LL, out. You and LL Cool J. Yeah. And now, I, now that me and LL spoke about it, and Marlon, I don't think I'm ever gonna be invited now <laughs> because <laughs> these dudes are saying too much. Like I want to go. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like Tell now, me, now I got my, this can thing. Can you be my plus one? I'm for gonna this have to year's... be somebody's plus one. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm gonna tell you straight up. They probably really don't want me in there. So plus one. I'm hoping you get in. <laughs> do you and think that you have just, did you think I hurt myself just now? Not I'm at not all. Gonna get not at all. No, okay. you're Angie Martinez. I'm just saying, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel a certain way if you just turned around like, big, sorry, I got to, you know, <laughs> and you <laughs> left me there. Then I have to be, no. as a real one, I have to say, Angie, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> she tells you beforehand yeah. we take separate cars yeah, just yeah. you know what I'm saying I'll Uber myself back all I want you to do is just throw me a deviled egg over the wall <laughs> you know what I'm saying just, just, just toss, toss toss something over you know but but yeah Baby, not we're yet. figure this out this yeah, year man. mark my words this yeah man year. mark my words we're you know, you know how many out. I've been to the brunch and space the same amount of times mm -hmm. yeah zero <laughs> wow absolutely call Jay call zero. Jay right now we're gonna, yeah we're gonna figure this out yeah we're gonna figure it out cause it's crazy I just wanna I'm gonna if I get in there I'm just gonna take a picture I'm just gonna be in there like look how we made it I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be in. There. I'm not gonna even act out. I'm gonna wear something past. Like what's just that? Just eat Well, when we go, just eat something before because I never have eaten at the brunch. That's what everybody say. They yeah, don't I've never eat. Never eaten at the brunch. because me and Marlon Wayans, he hasn't been invited either. We was gonna do like a thing called I lunch. What? 
<laughs> and the lunch is gonna be I. Right. You know, it's not. It's not like yo. Y'all should do like the day of the brunch. You should do the not Rock Nation brunch. Yeah, man. That's what I was and telling. And then you could do you, Marlon, and LL. Like you could mm. do an event. Yeah, man. That's what and I people... think it'll like stop right plan. there. I think I think that'd be all the star status we get because everybody else would be at the brunch. Snoop Dogg. Yeah, well, Snoop never been to the brunch, right? Really? Snoop mm-hmm. would be there. I mean, that's a fun and room. And then after yeah. that, it'd be like like Jose, Lucretia from Compton, <laughs> uh, Moses would come. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and not the Moses, no, the Moses plenty, that work with us in production. Trust me, there's plenty of people. There's yeah, plenty yeah, of people. yeah. It would yeah. be a good time. But, I would stop by after the brunch. I would come yeah. to your brunch. Wow. After, no, I'll take that. Everybody, everybody tripping like she laughing. Like no, I'll take that because I would all I need after because it would be probably more fun because you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like so, I would finish my day there. But, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they doing the brunch. Yeah, they're we're doing, doing like, the lunch. Yeah. yeah, see what I'm saying? See, they're McDonald's. I don't even like brunch food. There lunch is. food is so much better. Come on with Come us, on, man. Right? Put your name on it then. No. <laughs> She's like, nah, big. Uh, she said, I did say I'll stop by after. You know, and, and that's not even a guarantee. You know? Yeah, so you don't even eat there, huh? At the brunch. I don't think I've ever eaten. Mm-mm. Who wants to go to that, man? No, but I've, I I've had a couple oh. cocktails. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've had oh, a couple yeah, of man. cocktails. So what do y'all do at the brunch? Y'all stand around, talk? And- yeah, it's like a lot of photos, and everybody waits to take a photo. They, everybody wants to catch the moment where, where Jay's laughing, and then they're all laughing, too. Oh. And then they, they take that once they take that photo, right. then it's like who can make him laugh the hardest, and then they take the photo and then they move out of the way. So how did you? Get, how does one get invited? Does it come in a letter? Does, do you get an um, email? Do you, usually, I think it's an email. I mm. think it's an email, but I have seen a hard copy. Actually, I was yeah, asking because I've had the same like email since AOL. I still got that, so people oh. can't say that. <laughs> that you that really have an AOL address? Yeah, I still have an AOL, uh, and then I have my Gmail, and uh-huh. all of them are pretty much the same. It's just at AOL at Gmail. Do you so, have at blackberry.net? Yeah, I do, but it's I don't know where to find those. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I sent in my two way information, all that. You know, beam me everything, man. So and nothing. We we'll see twenty twenty four. I feel it though. No, it's coming. Twenty twenty four. We're gonna or twenty five. Listen, we're gonna do the book launch. Yep. With the Brock Nation brunch. Yep. We're gonna do like a whole press run. Right. We're gonna sell your books. Maybe yep. we bring some books to the brunch. Yeah, man. What the old books? No, the new books. Because I still work. need to sell the old book. I, I need this garage space. <laughs> yes. yes. You have to let that go. We're moving but forward. But what do I do with all these books in my garage, though? Well, it's onward and upward. Because now, everybody here. in here, well, how many copies you got? Six now? <laughs> yeah. Because I get all happy anniversary, happy birthday. And I just keep signing yeah. in these books because my wife be like, baby, please. Get them out of here. Get these books out the garage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My son in his closet, he like, dad. You got to you know, stop. My Why daughter under her bed. <laughs> Just burn them. You can't sell them online. You can't do like a little. I tried that, but then even the returns. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to report a loss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like, good yeah. Lord, have mercy, man. I love like, you, yeah, I, I get some people that like, man, I got your book. I'll be like, thank you. Like, I know <laughs> I can pull up in my in my phone right now. The people, the that... people that bought my book. Mm-hmm. You got four minutes. <laughs> 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 Angie, it is a pleasure I love you. to have you in the neighborhood. I'm so yeah, glad Anytime. we had a chance to catch up. Me too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I know. I you can't wait to... to see what you have going on next because we talked. I always oh, want to yeah. interview you. Why don't you come to my show when you come to New York? I haven't been Did invited. You come to New York? I haven't been invited. When was the last time you were in New York? Uh, about a week ago. No, stop it. <laughs> For real? Really? About a week ago. Yeah. All right, next time you come. No, I wasn't there a week ago. I just wanted to see. Because you, you lie too much. That's the problem. <laughs> no, there's a difference between lying and fucking around. <laughs> Like you know, I don't even want to stay fucking around because that sounds sound like I'm not doing mm-hmm. right by my way. There's a difference between lying and joking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. playing with you. All right. Go you're, ahead. You're now. an honest guy. We know that. You're Pretty on, much. You're... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know my real name, not Big Boy. It's not? Nah. See? It's there it is. Your birth certificate? Hey, dude, dude. It feel like I could just, like, I could peel these layers off with you. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know who you are. Right. Well, you will. <laughs> who you will. are you? When we sit down at the brunch. I'll tell you about myself. And when I read your new upcoming book. Yes, man. That's going to be a New York Times and LA Times bestseller. Mm-hmm. Do you have a title for it? Working title. What is it? It's a working title. Is that the name of it? No. Oh, you don't. You can't say it no, now? No, I can't say it right now. Okay. I even said too much just talking about it. Okay. Yeah. You should call it This Is The One. This Is The Book. Did this- somebody tell you that? No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> because that is, that's it. It's called This Is The One. <laughs> Yeah. Write that. <laughs> yeah, write that down for me. Never, yeah, never mind the last one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, in the description. Yeah, yeah, my book is gonna be called "This Is It." 
I'm gonna take that whole Michael Jackson thing. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna tell him. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, hey man, <laughs> this is stop. it. You like if y'all don't buy this one, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be on the cover desperate though. <laughs> I'm just gonna have this look like I should call it. Please buy this book. Mm. Please buy, this book. buy, please buy, please buy this, this book. book. It's give, it's gives, it's giving desperate. You don't want to do that. I am. Oh, I'm not. This, <laughs> buy, this is a sign for you to buy this book. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> buy this book or die. <laughs> if you don't buy this, you'll have bad that, luck. Now no, that yeah. is a book. Buy this book or the dog gets it. This book or die. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Believe that. Well, thank you for coming into the neighborhood. Anytime, I love. Thank it you will for definitely be me. greater later, mm -hmm. man. And like I said, oh, you man. are always great energy. Thank you know, you. even so you. how you kept bringing up the book sales. I know. Repeatedly. I'm really. I would like to apologize. You gonna feel bad later. You gonna feel, feel bad, bad in the every car. time because it comes up every time, and then I feel bad every time. You gonna, after. But you gonna feel worse in the car because the day you really gave it to me. For I did. Reason. But you oh. bring it up. You do. It's like you want it. It's like you. It's like you want it. Like I like pain. Yeah, a little bit. Are you looking at my credit card statements? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like you like it. You bring it up. It's like mm. you want me to do it. I can tell you the truth though. I didn't know we had the conversation. I forget a lot. Okay. Yeah. And I still think that when you said limb, I think you said, what did you say? You said leg. I think you said arm. Let's rewind the tape. I, I'll rewind. Okay. All right. You want to bet on it? Yes. Okay. What you want to bet? I bet your I Rock bet. Nation brunch ticket. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> we, we, we'll bet on the handshake. Okay. There it is. Angie Martinez Big in the boy. neighborhood, y'all. Big boy Big in the neighborhood. Boy.